Deleting scenes is a natural part to TV production, so Doctor Who is no stranger to this. Cramming huge stories and entire universes into small chunks means that, you know, an occasional line of dialogue or a silly joke might end up on the cutting room floor. And while the majority of the stuff that is cut from Doctor Who is usually just said silly jokes or bits of fluff, there have been points in the past where certain episodes have lost actually quite important things. Now it's not to say that the episodes on this list are complete train wrecks because they are missing these scenes, but it would have made things just a tiny little less hazy, or answered a question that was raised by fans after watching the final cut of the episode. So to quote the Cybermen hitting a delete on the scenes in question maybe didn't fare well for the episode. My name is Rich, welcome to Who Culture, and these are eight deleted scenes that explain confusing Doctor Who moments. Number eight, the camera Cyberman, Doomsday. First, the mystery. This is a scene from the closing episode of series two, Doomsday, and actually it answers quite a few questions raised by other villains in Doctor Who. You know those times when they send out a video transmission, be it to, I don't know, everybody's TV or just some kind of floating display on a spaceship? Just how do they do it? Who's got the camera? It's not exactly like you see some body or some variant of the villain in question stood in front of the one talking with a, a camera on its shoulder or something like that. Admittedly, there is a point where the Cybermen do look through a Cyberman's eyes to finally see the Daleks, but this Cyber leader broadcasting himself out to the entirety of the world to say, hey guys, we've taken over. We've seen the top floor of Torchwood Tower. There are no cameras anywhere. So just how is this working? Well. That's explained by a deleted scene. It's only a very short deleted scene, but you see a Cyberman with a wrist camera. You know, they have the little laser guns on their wrist. This poor bloke got demoted from zappy laser gun to GoPro. So when the Cyber Leader gives out his spiel to be taking over the world, you can look over his shoulder to see a Cyberman aiming a camera at him. So there you go, apparently these alien races decide to have at least one cameraman with each squad. Imagine being on the cyber production line and being the dude given the GoPro instead of a gun. I think I'd rather have the GoPro. I'll do some dope cyber cinematography. Cybertography. Number seven, Rixton's phone, Voyage of the Damned. So first up, the mystery. With the space Titanic plummeting towards the Earth, the Doctor with his very merry band of people do manage to save the day. Those people including the weird spiky red cactus Banacafalata and Rixton, the Prickston, because he's a Prickston and his name is Rixton and he's always there gallivanting about on his phone like all of us millennials with his you know, Snapchats and TikToks and whatever the f it is kids do nowadays. Not at one point does the Doctor turn to Rixton and say, hey mate, can I borrow your phone? Have you got any games on your phone? So why didn't the Doctor take Prixton's phone and send out some kind of distress signal to Torchwood or the Shadow Proclamation or something? Well, as this list suggests, this was explained in a deleted scene. After the meteors hit the Titanic, the Doctor gets into contact with Alonzo midshipman frame on the bridge on that weird sort of intercom thing. And during this sequence, there was a point when Rixton would be there chatting away on his phone. Cut back a little bit later and the Doctor finally asks him to use his phone. When Rixton does reluctantly pass it over, the Doctor realises that it's not working. Rexton says, yeah, but it's this is a Solar Plus phone. This should just work. It's a Todd Howard phone. Yet it doesn't. This was a scene introduced or put in to make it really clear the Doctor is completely on his own. No outside help is coming. Showrunner Russell T Davies did say that it was cut due to pacing, but it would have been nice to just reaffirm that that very glaring thing that could have been done, hence why people ask about it, it was actually explored. There you go. Rickston's still a prick though. Prickston. Number six, the fire alarm, school reunion. The mystery. Near the end of school reunion, the Krillotanes are currently bat people, and the doctor's there questioning, wondering how do we get past bats, bats, how do you beat bats? Kenny goes and elbows the f out of the wall, or more specifically a fire alarm, and you know, the alarms go off, bats don't like loud, high-pitched noises, and they can sneak past them. But interestingly, Kenny isn't really seen as a super duper smart character. You know, Kenny's not the one who gets the extra credit classes to break the Skasis paradigm and all that sort of thing. So how does Kenny just work that out quickly? Is he just a genius in disguise or have we missed something? It's definitely the latter because there is a deleted scene where Kenny actually sort of verbally works out how to get past bats. They look like bats, they've got wings and stuff. They don't like loud noises, bam, fire alarm. Interestingly, Kenny works this out before 
the Doctor. The Doctor's meant to be the cleverest man in the room. I mean, he's a teacher of physics, 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 physics. I can't say as quick as David Tennant. So it did seem a little bit out of place. Though this episode and this particular sequence still does work without the scene in, it would have made a bit more sense that Kenny isn't like as shit hot as we thought he was. Number five, the second screwdriver, the almost people. So the mystery. The Almost People and the Rebel Flesh revolves around two sets of people, and including two doctors. One made out of, well, people, the other made out of the flesh. And to put it bluntly, the whole sonic screwdriver situation is a complete mess. Some fans have watched this episode through and counted, and they think they can see three or four different individual Sonics being passed between the two versions of the Doctor. And basically, it's really quite hard to track. If you focus on the whole screwdriver malarkey, you won't even realise what else is happening in the episode. So let's look at the final scenes. The Doctor gives the Flesh Doctor his screwdriver to melt Flesh Jennifer as he flies away. But when he flies away, he also pulls the Sonic out of his jacket and defleshes Amy. So he was dual wielding the entire time. So the deleted scene, technically this hasn't actually been filmed. This was something that was cut from the script. Think back to the 11th hour and also whichever episode it was that Capaldi got his weird blue screwdriver, the TARDIS just like spits these things out. And supposedly that was gonna happen when the Doctor had handed off his screwdriver to the Flesh Doctor, came back to the TARDIS, he got a new one, then he melted Amy. But with that scene being absent, fans just thought, well, obviously the flesh created a flesh screwdriver as well. And it's like, well, yeah, but also if that were the case, why would the Doctor then give himself his actual screwdriver? Basically, this has kind of been explained, but also not explained help. Number four, the Sheriff's Secret, Robot of Sherwood. So the main bad guy in Robot of Sherwood is the wonderful Ben Miller's Sheriff of Nottingham. But there is a bit of a mystery surrounding his character. During the climactic sword fight between Robin Hood and the Sheriff of Nottingham, he says that he is half man, half machine. This line is actually partially cut off and it means that it actually went right over most people's heads. After this fight, the Sheriff manages to partially climb out of a vat of molten gold, which I'm pretty certain humans can't do. So, what the hell is going on with the Sheriff? Now, this is probably the worst offender on the list so far, because this deleted scene would have actually made the sword fight a bit more substantial, and Robin, in all of his sexy glory, realises, you know, obviously, if you don't have a head, you can't win a sword fight, so he goes to behead the Sheriff of Nottingham, and he succeeds. But he doesn't actually win the fight because the body of the sheriff goes and picks up his head and clicks it back into place and the fight continues. Like I said, there was a line that implied he was a robot. This scene proved he was partially robot. But interestingly, this also kind of explains the title because there are multiple robot knights in Robot of Sherwood. But then obviously the titular robot was in regards to the sheriff of Nottingham, not just for some reason, a singular for a bunch of weird face lasery robot things. Which sounds interesting. That could have been really cool. Might have made the episode a bit more interesting, if I remember rightly. Number three, the noise of the TARDIS, Journey's End. Series 4's finale really did hit a lot of people while they were down. The Doctor wiping Donna's memory was really quite excruciating to watch. The Doctor tells Wilf and Sylvia that if she remembers even a second of her adventures with the Doctor, her mind would just explode. Time goop coming out of her ears. Then the Doctor leaves. We get that really heartfelt salute in the door from Wilf, and we're all crying. Now, the TARDIS is, like, stupidly loud. We know this. We've seen it. You can always hear it from a billion miles off. Mickey in Series 1 hears it, like, halfway across pissing London. So when the Doctor takes off, like literally outside their house, how doesn't Donna hear it and subsequently ear goop kaboom? And well, that's explained by, and yes, you've guessed it, a deleted scene. The actual ending of Journey's End was almost completely different to what we got. Originally, two Cybermen were going to appear in the TARDIS behind David Tennant. In fact, you can still watch this, hence why I've got it on the screen here. And it's just kind of, there's no effects or sound, it just looks kind of dumb. But originally, there was also an extra scene involving Donna. Because this deleted scene shows that she did hear 
the TARDIS. And no, her mind did not explode since she reappeared in the end of time part one and two. While Donna is loudly jabbering away on her phone with her Snapchats and TikToks, I'll stop doing that now, she does indeed recognize the sound of the currently taking off TARDIS. She turns around and you can see it in her eyes that she knows that sound. There's something eating away at the back of her mind that's ready to come out of her ears or pop her eyeballs open. But she just sort of shrugs it off and goes back to her phone call. So interestingly, the most iconic sound she heard throughout all of her travels with the Doctor that isn't just him saying sexy things, like literally anything David Tennant says is counts as sexy, for some reason the TARDIS didn't trigger that exploding mind thing, and yet, for some reason in the end of time part one, whatever it is that triggers her, sets her going, and it's not the TARDIS. Number two, Mickey and the Bin, Rose. One of the cheesiest moments in New Who is in episode one, when Mickey gets eaten by a bin. The bin burps, for goodness sake, and Mickey is replaced by an Auton duplicate. But that does raise a bit of a mystery. How did Mickey get from inside a plastic bin, which was empty, bear in mind, so why Matey was putting the bin out on the street when it was pissing empty, I have no clue. Biggest plot hole in Doctor Who history, don't at me. How did Mickey get from inside a bin on some street in London to underneath the London Eye, clinging to a fence, looking at a big blob on the floor going, ah! But of course, there was a deleted scene. Now, earlier this year, since all of the lockdown stuff kicked in, a lot of rewatches of Doctor Who have been happening, and one of those happened with Rose. Russell T Davies, in fact, set up his own Twitter account, finally, to join in with it. And at one point, he did actually ask the question, I always wondered how real Mickey got from the bin to the Auton lair. But Russell himself did actually follow up and say that there was a part of the script he removed before filming. So the way this was all solved was... Auton Bin Men. Yeah. I guess the nesting consciousness picked up on people to duplicate and infiltrate with wheelie bins. Cool. Well, actually, it wasn't specifically Auton Bin Men. They would have kind of been there. It would have been more specifically warp shunt technology that meant Mickey could get from A to B. Although, I would love to have seen either an Auton come and awkwardly pick up a bin, or the bin to just sort of trundle all the way across London like you saw it trundle on the street beforehand. That would have been hilarious. And number one, defeating the Fisher King before the Flood. The underrated two-part story, Under the Lake and Before the Flood, concludes with the Doctor blowing up an entire dam to drown this week's villain of the week, the pretty cool-looking Fisher King. But with a name like the Fisher King, surely drowning it wouldn't work. It's literally got the word fish in its name, so presumably this thing would actually thrive under lots of water, right? So does the Doctor just take a wild punt at just, I don't know, screw it, let's drown the bastard even though he's got fish in his name? Or does this mystery have something a bit more to it? Did we miss something? Well, it turns out, obviously, in the list about deleted scenes things, yes, there was something missing. It turns out the Doctor had a very lengthy conversation with the side character Prentice, and he learns from him that the Fisher King is a being from a barren world, which means that, yes, you definitely can drown it. Why it's called the Fisher King? Not a pissing clue. Now, this is obviously pretty good confirmation that yes, you can just drown the bastard, but the fact the Doctor had to go to Prentice for this information in the first place proves the Doctor really didn't know about the fact that he could drown him. Now, I did say this was a lengthy conversation, so that's maybe why it was cut, but it's interesting they couldn't have just left a, a little bit in, or just a voice in the back of his head. You can drown him. It just seems a bit strange, really. And that is my list of deleted scenes that explain interesting Doctor Who moments. Please let me know in the comments down below if there are any I have missed. And interestingly, give me some ideas for scenes in Doctor Who you think should have a deleted scene, or even might, potentially. Is there a certain point in Doctor Who that you've thought, that could have been better explained, I would stick a scene there? Let me know in the comment section down below. If there's a really good one, I'm going to pin it to the top. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you're not subscribed to the Who Culture YouTube channel already, please, please do. We post new videos all the time, including a weekly podcast called Escaping Kasturbarus, where me and my partner Amy are currently rewatching the entirety of New Who Doctor Who, so that's 2005 to now. And every week we just do about an hour chatting rubbish and breaking down the episode we've just watched, what we'd fix, what we'd change, and just random rubbish about. Doctor Who. Please go and check that out if you can. You can also go and follow at Who Culture on Twitter if you don't already. You can follow me on Twitter at Pickup Change Toe and also on Twitch at Rich's Live. I stream three nights a week or three days a week, Tuesday and Thursday nights and Saturday afternoons. Until the next video, take care of yourselves. 
and I will see you soon. Bye.